Is it recording? Okay, it is recording. Let's see here. Yeah, it's recording. All right, so um, so sorry, guys. On this one here, uh, the really, it's so naturally done. I did a pretty darn good job at this point because I was up there on the on the top. Um, that I'm really just going to have to fix the foreground down below here a little bit. Um, thinking that we should start out by going to our lens correction. This is the Nikon uh, D750 with the Sigma 1.4. Um, it doesn't really uh, seem to be, this is an autofocus one. It doesn't seem to be out of focus. I think it's a very sharp, sharp focusing on the details. Some of the ways that we've learned, um, some of the things that we've learned today was, was learning how to focus. And so with that being said, before we finish this image, um, I want everybody to remember tonight to try to be ready to focus your gear on your own so that when I'm gone, you are able to do this on your own. And step one is focusing in on the live view mode and or through the viewfinder on a star or on the bright subject that I light for you as sharp as you can get it based on your eyes view. Number two is using the autofocus, using that light that I have on the subject, and then you get your focus in, and then you put it back to manual focus, and you leave it. Some of these gentlemen had tape. I forget the name of the tape because it's not adhesive. Gaffer's, gaffer's, gaffer's tape, yes. Gaffer's tape. Yeah, gaffer's tape is great for uh, taping your camera. <laughs> I'm sure it's like the duct tape for cameras, and so, that kind of stuff's really important. Um, so you're saying if you don't have a lock on your lens, you tape it. Is that what you're saying? If it's an autofocus lens, and I would do it in the daytime and set it back as far back as you can, like 14 meters, or if you want to go to 35 meters. But then you got to remember, your tripod's what's going to have to move. Right. So that way you don't mess with your focus at all. And then if that gaffer's tape is a good job, you know, holding both the zoom and the focus, you know, uh, fine focuser, uh, that's going to be, I feel like, the best opportunity for you to be able to just line up and shoot. I got a quick question for you. How did you find the difference between your, folk, your uh, what, what were you starting on? The Canon? Uh, the lens? Yes. The Rokinon. You started off on a different oh, lens, though. It was the uh, 24 to 105. 24 to 105, Canon, Canon. F2.8? No, it's F4. F4-ish. And so that she started with that one there. We played around a lot. We had her eyes so way up, her time way up, and we just I'm like, man, we couldn't quite get the sharpness. And she says, I got a wide angle, a 14 millimeter with me. I said, oh, you do, huh? <laughs> Go grab it. So she went and grabbed it. Tell me the biggest difference that you found between the two lenses, besides the fact that they are zoom or non-zoom and the aperture. What did you find? I guess the point is, what did you find? ISO is lower. And then what about the focus point on your lens? Oh, it was, yeah, I mean, you just focus the, it to infinity. To infinity, and there's a marker that's, there's a that marker tells you. Right okay. That, and a lot of those marks aren't, like, on different lenses. Aren't They're not accurate. true. You said it's nailed on, the on that Rokinon. That's part of the reason I bought into it and the cheapness of it and what it gave me. I was oh, like, yeah, I mean, sold. Yeah. <laughs> it's on that line. Not, if you turn it all the way to that infinity mark. Marker. Yeah, you're past it. Yeah, you're past it. And what you guys are talking about is exactly right. Back it back to that line. Yeah, is it, if I get back to that L-shaped line right there, I'm always going to be 14 meters and beyond good to go. Um, so let me touch this image up real quick, and, and then we'll take a break. Um, but focusing is, my point is, is that focusing is probably the biggest stressor for all of us last night. And if we can all try to help each other dial ourselves in, on how to focus better at night by either doing the gaffer state, by doing the live view, by making sure that uh, you know your equipment, like where your buttons are, so that when it's time to zoom in to your live view, you know which button to press. And that just takes practice, takes time, takes you know doing it over and over and over and over. I think after a year of having this camera, I finally know where the buttons are. <laughs> One year. One year and 20,000 images later. <laughs> so... Um, Let's go ahead and, and move on, but uh, that was from last night, feedback from that. Uh, so far, I've done the lens correction. I brought down the VNA a little bit. 
I'm going to go back over here and do the uh, clarity. I'm just going to pump it up a little bit. And then notice how the Milky Way came right up. I'm going to crank up the uh, vibrance just because I love that vibrance. Notice my nice yellow light that I used isn't too blue. It kind of continued to keep that natural light painting going. Um, highlights can go down just a hair if we want. I don't, I don't think they're too bright anyway, so I'm going to control Z that out. Shadows, I don't think I want the shadows to come up because that's going to create noise. So I'm leaving that alone. And then the exposure, well, I'll fix that later. I think just the white balance at this point is what I'll play with. Um, if I go down a little more, it comes blue, comes too blue. That looks about right, you know, uh, in between bluish yellow kind of color. But naturally, uh, if you wanted to share this image with people, uh, your friends and your followers, um, this image is set to go. Uh, you could tell them that, of course, this light comes from the source that you were lighting here. And or you can come here to your adjustment tool, use your little handy dandy tool here, and just from the middle of the screen, whoops, I'm just going to darken it up like that. And I'm going to control shift fill. And we're going to do it with black again. And hit OK. And then just brush in that area uh, with the, the darkness of, of the, the layer that we wanted to have in there. Last but not least, is uh, you can zoom in here. And you guys remember that stamp tool? Okay, I can't do the stamp tool on a, on a, on what they call here. These are layer masks. That's this stuff right here. And so I have to do a control shift E, a new layer. And then now I can use the stamp tool over here and alt to select here. And then I just kind of go this way, go that way. Alt to select here again and come across, coming across. Notice I'm not using the black brush tool to, to brush any of this in. And that's because if you blow this image up and at one point in time someone might want to print of your work, um, that will show up. <laughs> Looks like someone spray painted the bottom of my image. But uh, the reason I say it will show up is because I had a friend print an image just like that. And I said, did you use black on that, like the actual you know, black from the color? He said, yeah. I said, just turn down the lights and do it naturally from its own image. Um, and again, we'll the stamp tool here and the stamp tool to cover this area just a little bit down into there. Okay. Control Z out, zero to come out. Okay. All right. Next is, uh, is I'm actually, oops, I hit the vibrant tool, sorry. Next is I'm actually going to work on that sky. So I'm going to the curves palette, and I'm going to do the same thing I've done before as I bring this right up. Now, be careful on the brightness here. If you get all the way up here, it gets too bright. But I feel like last night, boy, this lens and this uh, this zoom that you had on it, uh, Terry, it was just, you had it framed real nice. Uh, I just, I'm in love with this picture. Um, as I bring down that, uh, that brightness I, I brought into it, I can decide how dark I want it to look. And, and then come over here and hit control shift F5 or edit fill black and then only enhance the areas that I uh, am planning on trying to get it to look good. I might even hit the house a little bit so that roof lights up a little more, you know. We're at 50%. Okay, after that bottom layer is done, then I go ahead and crank it back up so I can save the time of the palette. It goes much larger here. And then I always like to see what I did the difference of. So we go here to here. I feel like there is good. But if I turn this down to, let's say, 30%, and I minus out just, oh, there we go. It allowed me to go here. I can brush in just a little more light on this subject here. And then last but not least, a much smaller one creates a much sharper line, but I don't want the light in here. I just wanted it on the on the subject. Let's take a look at what we did there. How's everybody liking that? It's like someone turned on the lights. Um, the final part on this one is I would probably do um, the vibrance tool heavily on this uh, Milky Way just for fun, see what happens. Um, and once you do that vibrance tool, you see your yellow. So I have to. Control Z, Control Z, get out of that because we're not ready for Vibrance Tool. 
We need to go to our color balance. Our sky is still a little too yellow. We get into those blues. A little bit of the red from the pinkish yellow here. Uh, a little bit of the reddish from the bluish red. And a little bit more blue. That's too much. I'd rather go zero on that one and keep it where it's at there. Go to maybe oh, too much blue. It's 10 is good. I think is the best we're going to do on the blue. Now let's try and bring up the vibrance on the Milky Way. That looks much more colorful. Okay, so I have made some adjustments. That made the whole scene a little more blue, and I'm going to leave it. This made the whole scene real yellow down here, but real colorful up above. So, again, you want to fill your, your um, layer mask and then brush in. Um, I hit the caps lock, by the way. You see how my circle went away? That's when the caps lock gets hit. It took me like five minutes one day <laughs> to figure that out. Where did my circle go? So uh, we filled it with black. We're going to fill it in with white. Um, first off, uh, I don't need 19%. I need 100%. And I just need to get this image over with here so we can get a nice break going. Um, here we are. I'm bringing it across. Bring it across. Okay. Palette bigger. Okie dokie. And then we're ready to look at the image here. So from a little bit of a grayish scale looking uh, image, more natural, what we see out there, to what Francisco likes to do, which throws in those colors. Some of these uh, consonants turned a little bit purple. Um, and then finally, uh, we control zero out of there, get all these out of the way. And uh, that's what we have. What do you guys think? Did you get something similar to this? Everybody else, yeah? How was your front image? Oh, you know what? I actually did. I shot one from that side, and the lighting just was good enough. So I'm going with that perspective. As opposed to the front view? Yeah, the front. The front, number one, the milk was coming out of the roof. And um, it didn't have the dimensionality of that. Yeah, see, Terry's, a, she's, I feel like, the expert of separation. Yeah. <laughs> she re really does a phenomenal job here on this one. We talked about it a lot. Yeah, and, and she's got such a phenomenal composure on this one. I, I, I totally love all of it because if I was to block out half the screen, only only see just the right half, you can literally enjoy the right right third. You can enjoy the bottom third. You can enjoy the top third. You can even enjoy the left third by only looking here and over. So the lines are really, to me, uh, are neat and they're fun. Um, tonight, uh, I, I'm going to stop uh, here and hit save on your... On your yours, uh, Photoshop there, and then I'm gonna cheat and save this image on mine. <laughs> oh, nice. That's okay. Saving desktop. Go ahead. What I don't have is I have no idea how to run the camera, so it's like okay. 